Rob Willis. He balances being a world-class hairdresser while globetrotting and training stylists in the US, Canada, and Africa. You can see Rob's work featured on billboards and in magazines. And recently, he has made a name for himself as an author of several professional books. He's a true advocate for continued education for stylists and has been a main stage performer at numerous industry events. Rob, I am so glad you had time to, to come here from Detroit. Uh, and I said it right this said time, right. didn't I? Okay. <laughs> uh, Kamala Sway to spend some time with us and talk about your story. This is really exciting for me, so thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Oh, God, it's my pleasure. Uh, I am blown away by your story uh, about your background coming from a big city, from an inner city. Um, you, you had challenges, for, I mean, literally from birth. At a time in your, I mean, you, you literally had, had a split family, raised by a grandmother. I don't mean to get into your whole resume, but bottom line, tell me your story. Tell me how, uh, how you were formed. How, how did you get to kind of be where you are today? Tell us about it. Wow, a lot of prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently a lot answered of prayers. prayer yeah. and, and, and discipline and, and, and good ethics and good examples. You know, I, I've, my grandmother was very influential in, in molding me, and I believe that you mold a child from very young. Now, you said your grandmother raised you till you were 11. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happened after 11? At 11, she was she, cancer is what happened. And we parted. She went back to Winston-Salem, mm -hmm. and I started to live with my father. What kind of father was he? What kind of well, mother? My, I mean, tell me my, about your mom and dad. My, my father My father is an ex-police officer okay. in the DPD. Ooh, discipline. My father was my brother, and my mom was my sister. Boy, talk about, talk about <laughs> having, having, having. Yeah, and, 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 and complete opposites of the spectrum, right. complete opposites. My father, very disciplined, very straightforward, you know. My mother, very, where is the party at? Now talk about, talk about having two different perspectives of life. It's like being legally bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have total excuse for that, man. You, you got total air cover. Yes. All right, go ahead. Yeah. And interesting, just the combination of them both and being exposed to both of their friends and the people that they were you know, around. In my community, one maybe, one in a hundred went to college. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's a very small number. Everybody else was working at the plant. They, they, they came up to the Midwest from the South to work in the plant. So the mentality of everybody was get a job in the plant, mm -hmm. you secure, raise your family, da da da. So you're gonna be building Chevys or something. There like you that. go. Right? And I just, I, I was never into that. My grandmother didn't raise me that way. She raised me to be whatever I was, the best at it. Mm -hmm. And those were things that just rang in my head throughout the course of my life. And how I stumbled up knowing that I wanted to be in the beauty business I always collected comic books and I drew hairstyles off of the heroes. If anybody pays attention to comic books, heroes are always extreme and Absolutely. they always have extreme hair. So I didn't know that I was going to be in the business. I, I swear I didn't because I wanted to be a rock star like everybody else. Absolutely. In high school, played in the band. Right. You know, tried Absolutely. Tried different things. Right. Those things didn't really work out. But one day I was on my way to school. And, and I had drawn some hairstyles, and there was a beauty salon by the bus stop, and I stopped at that beauty salon and asked the guy, do you want to buy my pictures for your window? You know, he kind of laughed, like, I can't believe you're here trying to sell me pictures. Let me see them. Mm -hmm. And when I let him see them, he, he said, well, can you do this? Because it was very detailed hair. And I'm like, no, I could do my hair, because mm -hmm. of course I played with it and my right. dad you know showed me how to do some things right and uh he started to work with me and, and he told me i was a hairdresser really didn't know it he gave you the break yeah he gave me the break and he allowed me to come in and kind of watch him and sweep up next thing i know i was in beauty school but you're you're in the inner city you're you're going through it from a split family and all this kind of thing uh, it's not necessarily cool uh, to be a cosmetologist. I mean, guy, guys want to be rock stars, want to be football right. players, they want to do everything else, but they don't necessarily want to be a cosmetologist. What were your challenges when you got into school and when you got into in the profession? Life has a way of throwing all kinds of things in front of you right. to make you think you're not where you're supposed to be. But if you walk in a path and believe 
that you're going to get where you set your goal, you get there. Right. And this business has a way of rewarding you for the time that you put in it. One of the things that I admire about the beauty industry is if, if, if you can visualize and, and believe you can make things happen, and education is probably the most important thing mm -hmm. that a stylist or a creative person can right. have because right. it can teach you what to do with your talent. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, do you buy into the, uh, I teach my students this all the time and I believe in it, and that is the 80-20 rule. The 20% comes from your talent in, in cutting or coloring or whatever you're doing. 80% comes from your ability to present yourself, sell yourself, make somebody feel good about themselves. Do you buy into that? Absolutely, 100%. And I, Olive Benson said something to me one day. The great Olive Benson. The great Olive she Benson, great rest her soul. She, I, I called her like a mother, somebody giving me her phone number to call her because I was having a challenge. And, and she says, Rob, remember this, good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good get better and the better get best. And I, I love that. That stuck with me from that day until this day because mm -hmm. I, I was going through a period kind of like an incubation period. Right. I, I've been just put into a group of people that I was the youngest one, and the most inexperienced, and these were all top guns in the business. So I, I just wanted to absorb, but I didn't know what to say to them or how to talk to them, so I listened. And when the opportunity came, I just mimic what I saw them do until I got it right. And, and when they saw that I was there, they started to kind of push me and, and help me more. And the next thing I knew, I, I, I was doing things that I never thought I would do. And then I had an opportunity come. It was to put together the first African-American team to represent the United States at the International Beauty Show. And that skyrocketed my career. I did main stage probably 15 more times mm -hmm. after that, back to back to back to back to back, until main stage became second nature to me. Right. And, and as, it be, as it got more easy for me, then the companies start to pay more attention to me. And then they would come to me, I wouldn't have to go to them. You actually have one of the best quotes I've ever seen in the beauty industry, and I'm, I mean I'm very proud of it and I'm very impressed with it. You said, uh, and I'm, I think I'm quoting you right, I hope I do, okay, and that is, hair knows no race, hair only knows texture. I believe that because I've lived it, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm a bald head color expert. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, right. I, I, I've done hair on every race across the, the, the board. It's a cuticle, a cortical, and a medulla. Mm -hmm. Now, Period. the skin that it's connected to all has red blood running underneath it. So if, if you can take the face of race out mm -hmm. and deal strictly with texture and beauty, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And then you're unlimited. Amazing, isn't it? I've got to tell you, you are an inspiration. Uh, one final thing, and I think you've kind of said it already, and I'm just going to ask you maybe to say it in just about a minute. Can you just tell me, what's your, what's your brief message to students that are in school today? I mean, I, I don't want to get on a soapbox. We're not trying to preach here, but what's your message? My message to the students would be dream again, but in your dream, know that you're working towards making it come true. Whatever your environment is, that's temporary. Mm -hmm. Because any day that environment could change and, and, and your attitude, your actions are going to justify your preparation for making your dream come mm -hmm. true. And stay focused, stay focused. But the most important thing I have to say to students is, number one, finish. Number two, get your license. And number three, learn to communicate. Communication is the majority of the battle. That's absolutely incredible. Rob, you are the man. Okay, I really, really appreciate your time Thank today. You Thanks.